Okay, guys, how's it going? Uh, I'm going to be teaching you how to use Tinkercad uh, for our STEM Day projects here so you can create your 3D models of the solutions that you are creating here. So first things first, you're going to need to navigate to Tinkercad.com. Um, you have two options once you get here. You can either create account, uh, an account or you can use uh, our account, just kind of a shared account. Um, let me start by showing you the easiest way, which would just be to use the shared account. Uh, click sign in. Um, email or username. Email is full steam ahead FL, or rather just the username. And then the password is make1234 with a capital M. I'm going to show you that real quick so you can see what it looks like. Make1234 and full steam ahead FL. I'm going to type that in. You can, of course, pause the video if you need to see that for longer. Um, if you're using the shared account, uh, remind me later, if you're using the shared account, the, the downside to this is that you're sharing it with pretty much everyone else who's ever used this account. There's 72 pages. There's several hundred, uh, maybe closer to a thousand different models. And if you don't uh, keep track of your model, it's pretty easy to lose it. So um, if you are using this account, we'll make sure we name it. The other alternative would just be to create your own account. You can do that easily by clicking join now. Um, you can join the class if you want to. The class code is right here, 35GU93JP94QW. Uh, or you can just create a personal account using your email address. If you are uh, 13 or younger or under 13, it'll ask you to put in your parents' email address, but that shouldn't apply to any of you guys. So we put in, an arbitrary birthday that's old enough. There we go. Um, then you'll ask for your email and password, and you'll have some access to it. So let me go on back here. I'm going to use. All right, I'm going to go ahead and log in. It's all saved on my computer. There we go. All right, so first things first. Um, this is all the projects that have been created over here. So these are you know, anywhere from two years to seven year, two months to seven years old. Uh, in order to create a new model, new design, you're just going to click the blue button there, create new design. All right. So this is your work plane. This is where you're going to be building your objects over here. So uh, in order to start building, uh, or before we start building, let me show you a couple of quick controls. If I use the wheel on the mouse. You can zoom in and out. You can get closer to an object. In fact, let's put an object on there. I'm just going to drag this square over there so I can zoom in and out on it. If I right click on my mouse, I can orbit around. There we go. Zoom in and out. Um, I can move the object around just by clicking and dragging it. I can move it wherever I need. Notice that I can't actually lift it off the platform unless I use this cone up here. Here we go. You can see a shadow. You can change your angle to see that it is actually off the platform. It's floating. Um, and then, of course, I can change the size and shape of this. So I can make it skinnier. I can make it longer and wider. Um, I also can rotate this shape using any three of these axes here. I can round the edges of this particular shape. And then really importantly, my favorite button here is the undo button, because uh, inevitably I'm going to make some mistakes, and the undo button has saved me more than once. Just press undo if you need to go back. It can revert all the way back to where you were. There we go. Okay. Uh, we, can, we can change our colors. Um, we can make it transparent by clicking transparent. All kinds of different things we can do. All right. Uh, so I wanted to show you how to model um, a, uh, a tree teepee because uh, I'm guessing that that was not done uh, before. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead and take a crack at it. Um, so when you do 3D modeling um, and almost any time you do 3D modeling, you have to be uh, an analytical thinker. That means you need to uh, take a uh, finished product, a finished idea and break it down into its parts and figure out how to get those parts. So what I see when I look at the tree TP is um, kind of a, a cone shape. Um, and so I'm going to start with a cone here, uh, and then I'm going to need to do some things to this cone, obviously, to get it to look more like the TP. So a couple cool tricks that I'll show you here. Um, if I hold the shift key, it'll scale the whole thing up together I change the color. I think they, they started using black. Well, that's a little hard to see. We'll do gray for now. 
there we go. Um, so, so far this doesn't look very good. In, in Tinkercad, one of the, the cool things you can do is you can use um, positive space and negative space. You can use a hole. And if I group together the hole with the solid piece, it'll cut out the combination or it'll cut, cut out the overlap there. So I kind of want to cut out the top of this guy. So I'm going to take the hole and put it on top. Make sure it's big enough. And this should give me a shape that I can use. There we go. So in order to group them together, my group button is up here. It's not going to work unless I actually have selected both of them. So I can select both pieces by dragging a box around it. Or I can hold shift and that will allow me to select both pieces. Group them together. There we go. Okay. So I do have uh, another problem here. The tree TP should be hollow. Um, in fact, let's uh, look up a little reference here. There we go. There's a good tree TP. Cool. Um, so we're going to take our cone shape here. We're going to need to hollow this whole thing out. So I'm going to do that just with another cone. I happen to be underneath the platform right now. That's not a good idea. Let's make it bigger. Make it a hole. And I want it to be just barely smaller. Okay. There is a really neat tool and align tool here. So if I want to align these two pieces, make sure they're centered. Go ahead and highlight both of them. The align tool is up here. I can align it in the middle on my X and my Y and my Z. I don't want to. I want to keep that lined up on the bottom. There we go. So now I can group these two together just like I did before. Okay, kind of getting there. Looking almost like a tree TP. Look at some of these other details here. Um, we do have kind of these little ridges there. So I'm going to use some rounded rectangles to make some of those ridges. I don't know what the purpose of those is, but let's go ahead and add them. Um, there we go. We're going to round it slightly. Let's make the color match. There we are. I'm going to need to rotate it so I can rotate it. Notice that when you rotate, um, if you are inside the circle, it snaps to every 22 and a half. If your mouse is outside the circle, then you can uh, do more precise uh, rotation there every one degree. So let's go ahead and move that up. Move it over. A little too high up. Okay, let's see how that looks. Uh, should be flatter on the bottom, sticking out more on top. So let's see. Uh, one useful tool: if you press F, you can focus on that piece. Makes life a little easier. So let's get that. I'm going to slide it in a little bit. I can change my snap grid down here, so I can do more precise movements. Okay, that looks reasonably okay. Now, I've made one of these. Um, rather than having to do the same exact thing a hundred times, I'm going to duplicate it. Um, you can copy and paste as well, but duplicate's really useful. I'll show you why. So duplicate, um, it puts the old copy right on top of the new one. So I'm going to turn this, bring it over here. Um, then I'm going to rotate it like so. And try to position it just right. It looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate again. Now, this is why I like to use duplicate. It'll predict where my next one should go. And if you get it right, it'll make your life a lot easier. Well, I didn't get it perfect, but it's still going to make my life a lot easier. I've got all these pieces. There we go. And now I can just kind of adjust and move them in a little bit to get it exactly where I need it. I'm going to focus back on this just to make it easier. There we go. All right. So far from perfect, but we're getting there. Okay. 
looking kind of like a tree teepee. I like it so far. We do have these pieces sticking out on the inside. Um, I can just put another hole in there. I'm going to cheat here, double click on that guy. I'm actually going to copy, duplicate this hole. Uh, actually, this is when I want to use my copy. So we'll copy it. There we go. And then we'll just do that all again. Looks pretty good. Hopefully that'll trim off the inside there. The red lines means it's thinking. Mm, it sort of worked. Worked on one side. All right. In the interest of time, let's keep rolling. Looking at my tree teepee over here. Um, it's a little rounded at the top. I could add a torus at the top. Try to match the size. And my diameter. Change my color. Oop, too big. Uh, there we are. All right. Looks pretty good. Um, now, there is a, a ton of other shapes I want to show you here as well. Um, we can go ahead and um, if we click on basic shapes, there's all kinds of different things. I'm actually going to go ahead and put a tree in there and it'll be really easy to do. I can come down here to my shape generators. Um, I mean, you can take a look through all these different things, structures and scenery to improve your model. Oh, there's a tree right there. Didn't even mean for that. But I happen to know in these shape generators, there's another tree. Um, I'm going to click on all and there's just you know, dozens of pages of shape generators here. I'm going to keep going until I find my tree shape. And all these shapes could be really useful. In fact, I might even find a shape. There's a not so good tree. I might even find a shape that would have been make, made my life a lot easier here. Uh, yeah, something like that or that. I'm still just looking for my tree. Oh, that would have been useful, huh? Where's my tree? Almost there. I'm running out of pages. There we go. There's my tree. Okay. Oh, it's so tiny. I'm going to hold shift while I scale it up. Make it bigger. There we go. Now I've got a, a legitimate um, 3D model. Make this look brown. Got a legitimate 3D model of, uh, of a product that we could then show off and share. This is proof of concept. This shows what it looks like. Um, in, in fact, I could even 3D print this thing, um, you know, on a, a small scale with our 3D printers. But um, and that could, you know, show potential investors and suitors what this looks like, how this works, how it's designed. Um, one important thing you're going to want to do with all your models is make sure you rename them up here. Um, I'm going to call this Shore. Uh, tree, T, P, I think that's how they spell it. Yeah. Um, I'm even going to put in some grass here, put in some terrain, uh, cause why not basic shapes? Let's just do this, make it thin, make my model look better, really show off for whoever's going to be seeing this. There we go. I probably should have grouped all this together. Did I? I did. Excellent. There we go. So there's your there's your basic um, tutorial for Tinkercad. Uh, it does take a lot of practice to get good at it. It's not something that's super easy. I've been doing it for many, many years. So uh, if it doesn't come as easily right away, don't fret. It will take some practice, but you got time to practice and your models do not have to be overly complex. There's absolutely nothing wrong with uh, a simplified model. The, the goal is to have this experience and, and use our brains to do some analytical thinking, some modeling and some design. So have fun.